Hi everybody, you are listening to 31 Days of Horror, a series of blogs and podcasts where every day for 31 days from October the 1st till October the 31st, you will be taken on a ride through 31 film experiences, unlike the typical list of movies that you come to expect from the Halloween season. So this is day three, and uh, today we're going to be talking about When a Stranger Calls. This is a 1979 movie, so it's right at the time where teen slasher movies were becoming popular. It involves a psychopathic killer who terrorizes a babysitter and returns seven years later to menace her again. It was directed by Fred Walton and stars Carol Kane and Charles Durning. It's, um, it's one of those films that sets things up for future films and a lot of motifs that you've come to recognize in films such as Scream. And uh, it might have actually taken its idea from, from the 50s film Experiment in Terror. <laughs> 31 Days of Horror is officially sponsored by Infernal Imagery. Visit infernalimagery.com throughout October 2018 and receive 20% off your purchases by using the offer code 31 days. Today's tea of the day is Infernal Imagery Planchette. Shit. 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 That's offer code 31 days for 20% off at infernalimagery.com. And now we bring you the podcast review of When a Stranger Calls with Andy Lewin and Stephen Radford. Hello and welcome to the 3rd of October. Andy's back. Hi. Back in the house. This is 31 Days of Horror where we review 31 films in 31 days. Um, and we're up to day three. So we're, we're you know, you're, you're back again and you're... Yeah, I've not, I've not given up yet. No, no, you're doing all right. I'm doing, doing all right. right. I feel, yeah, a bit shaky, but yeah. I'm doing all right. I, I, I think, I think this, is, this is a great film to talk about for day three. Um, when a Stranger Calls. Mixed feelings, I think, I feel. But um, I, I think I have, because I, I saw, the, saw the sequel first. So, uh, but um, right, the okay. first film really has a lot of motifs that kind of set up a lot of future horror films. Your thoughts, first of all. Okay, well, the beginning. Uh-huh. Scream. Yeah. Ah, but would you have known that if you'd not if, seen Scream? Well, obviously not. <laughs> <When> you saw, <laughs> if you saw this back in the day. Well, back in the day, no, because yeah. Scream would have been made. But I'm just saying that's, yeah, that's, is, where, that's where they got the idea a, from. Def, yeah, so. You know, so that's what I initially thought. Yeah. Um, I like her, the act, actress at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Do you know what? She we, has a name. Her name is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because I remember. I remember we're, we're her name. We're much faster there. Yeah, yeah. Carol Kane, of course. Carol Kane. Carol, Carol Kane. Kane. She, she was in, She was in Annie Hall. Yeah. Yeah, she was yeah. famous for being the one who uh, who was Alvy's lover. Yeah, you know, yeah. Was annoyed. Yeah, I found it. I enjoyed the the idea of it. Yeah. Acting is pretty terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout. It's funny because it, I never actually thought about the acting. I uh, I just kind of thought that they were just. I, I see. I wasn't too sure if it was a TV movie or not. I think the second one was. Right. Okay. And um, but I saw the second film. It still had Carol Kane in it. It still had um, Charles Durning in it, yeah. uh, the detective. Um, but it was done. I, I listened to Riff Tracks, which is a, a comedy um, commentary on okay. that. They these these guys they riff pretty much in the same way as uh, oh, who does comedy riffing on commentaries. Do we know anybody who does that? Um, Bruce Willis. <laughs> Cops, <laughs> was it cop out? Cop out, yeah. yeah. Kevin Smith um, but yeah, they, basically they 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 the tri trio. I was gonna say triple a trio who who basically rip rip the shit out of all these uh, B movies and um, okay. horror movies, okay. and that they they. I watched that first and it was hilarious and I enjoyed it. And then I realized that, oh, this is when a stranger calls again. There's actually a first one. So apparently we missed the first phone call. So when the stranger calls. And of course, yeah, the first time I saw it, I thought, yeah, scream. Definitely. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's, that's so where I, they got it from. So you kind of feel, I kind of feel robbed a little bit about scream, you know, just taking it completely because not many people really referenced when a stranger calls when scream came out. No. And it's not in any of the, um, academic scenes 
uh, when they were talking about the, all the different films yeah, like aliens that influenced them. But I believe the never... words get away from her, you bitch. Yeah. yeah. But they never mentioned this in that, in that minutia. Of, no. Um... So maybe Wes Craven, God rest his soul, <laughs> was like, well, not many people have seen that, so let's not reference yeah, it. Yeah, they can't. Maybe they did. But then it, yeah, maybe, maybe it was in the script. Who knows? And it's just one of the scenes to cut out. Yeah, could Who be. Knows? Could have been. But it's definitely that's where they got it from. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, um, but you're, you're still not you're not impressed with the. Uh, did you enjoy the cinematography? The fact that uh, all the the shots of the woman that the the killer was stalking, second the second woman who was stalking. Yeah. Uh, the every, one he she he finds in the yeah. bar. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, when he's stalking her, she's always in silhouette. Yeah. And she's always str- her strength is being in silhouette when she's when she's against light. But as soon as uh, she's in her apartment, she's unsafe. When you yeah, so in her, the darkness, she's safe. In the safe. darkness, in she the, was safe. Yeah, and in the, the light, light, she was not safe. Yeah, I, well, I, I did. That... I noticed that and I thought it was interesting. Yeah. But it's. I thought, yeah. But, it, right. This is one of the rare times where I'd say a film might do well being remade. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. You know what I mean? But by. Not not a by decent... not, not by the one that we we generally talk about who who makes movies and <laughs> we always Mike. wonder Michael Michael I forgot his name would you believe yeah. it it's been so long since we've done a podcast together I forgot his name but yeah not a Michael Bay remake no because that that would be completely <laughs> different she wouldn't be in a silhouette then would she <laughs> she'd be wearing a thong <laughs> walking down Sunset Boulevard. Airplanes flying overhead. Yeah, for no reason. <laughs> just, 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 <laughs> a big robot inside <laughs> comes out of nowhere. No, no, no. The actual killer is a robot. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, he's yeah, stalking you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but stalking you from underneath, from from the curb, from the curb, from uh, up from the sewers. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be Pennywise, <laughs> <laughs> you do a matchup. But it's um so a Pennywise calls. Sorry. Pennywise calls. <laughs> oh man, so. Uh, Go on, you yeah. tell me what what do you like about it? I I, I I think you're quite taken with it. I'm quite. I, I think I was quite taken with the idea of the relationship between having an yeah. The, it, it's that old school detective. It's not Brad Pitt. It, you know, that's, that's an old reference. Brad Pitt was an actor in the '90s who was quite successful and quite good looking. Not anymore. Yeah, Robert Redford helped him get his first part. Yeah, um, but when you look at um, a film, if this was remade now, they'd have to be really young and handsome. They'd have to be, or or leave Schreiber. You know, it might not be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like Liam Schreiber. Yeah, and then at least um, you've got the link to Scream. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> Liam. Oh, yeah, but um, it, it was it was that kind of like Columbo thing. I think I had a nostalgia feeling about it. And yeah, because he's got quite the belly on him, hasn't he? Detective? He has. So when he's chasing after him, it's almost laughable. It is laughable, and I think that but, I think it had a it had a good heart, and I think there was a good chemistry between the characters, maybe not the actors, but that you know you you know these actors from previous films. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of I, I think it was just enjoyment of seeing them. In this movie that I never seen before, mm. you know. Well, it's got like the part where um, she's in the apartment and he comes out, mm-hmm. and then she does that incredibly overacting scream where she's like pulling at her hair, and, yeah, and then the detective starts banging at the door. It's That's, just so yeah over the top. Maybe and... it, yeah, I, th- I think maybe it, it is, and the the build that was kind of like you, you kind of expected it to be a little bit more subtle. Yeah, maybe. Uh, and a little bit and more realistic. The, the guy who was the, the stalker. Yeah. I oh, wasn't that keen on him. You didn't really seem to be that freaky or scary or anything like that. He was no, just... which I, I guess that could be the, you know, yeah. the stalker's gift to not but be scary. they were scary trying to be different. I think they were trying not to have this whole, you know, the stalker is, you know, unseen. And maybe it would have been better if, if you didn't actually see who he was. I think it would have been better with um, a better director. Um, possibly yeah you know it could i will definitely concede the fact that there's a great film in there yeah there definitely could be a really good film in there yeah and i can see why you put it on the list yeah but it's just a one-off horror not something that you can actually consider as a classic to be watched every year no not no. not for me would you um that means no yeah you're thinking yeah about you're it, right. ladies and gentlemen, thinking about thinking it about no it. I, I think i'd probably uh, pick up on it uh every five years maybe every 10 years, years maybe a decade yeah it's one of those things that you think oh i can't remember how whether that was good or bad you know yeah and then you watch and go oh it was bad but then you you watch it when the remake comes out basically and that's probably the next time you'll pick it up so you're probably right you know it's probably a misfire in this case 
Yeah, we're going to, you know. That's okay. Well, you see, this this list of 31, uh, to me, I, I, I compiled them um, in January, back in January, and I was like, well, what am this I going to This is how long he's been plotting this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not plotting anything. When it gets to the end of the 31st day, he's going to murder me. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> Where do I go? it's Halloween now, bitch. <laughs> yeah. And the last thing you'll hear is me. Round and round the garden like a teddy bear. What we should really explain, I guess, is in the beginning of the film. Yeah. There's a, a woman who's babysitting. Yeah, yeah. So, and she gets stalked over the phone. He just keeps That's ringing it. up saying, "Have have you checked the children?" Yeah, I mean, that, there's a classic line, have you checked the children? And yeah. it, that is kind of a freaky thing, because you, you said it to me the other day on the t on Messenger. Yeah, yeah. I actually went and I thought, I better go and check the kids. You know, it's effective. Yeah, yeah. And then you should have checked the children. I know. And it's a really dark beginning. It didn't get under my skin. That's, it, yeah, that's what you, you know need. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, if you there's a stalker, yeah. you want to get that uneasy feeling. Yeah, you, you do. You're like yeah. seven. Uh, yes. You know, you just want to go, oh, You're right. God, yeah. But that didn't, it didn't make me feel that. It yeah. made me, all right, that was a film. I can see what they were doing. Yeah, good. That's it. I like that point. I like that. Yeah, it didn't get it under the skin. So that's, uh, so yeah, so it's not a classic. But um, so there we go. Yeah. That's um, When a Stranger Calls. Definitely worth a watch. Worth a watch. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But no, if it has to be a classic. Nothing has to be a classic. And this is what I, and this is what I enjoy doing is, is trying to see which ones are going to be the classics. Which ones are we going to just put them to uh, Satan's fire pit for... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know I've got one of those. Satan's vegetables. Satan's lettuce. Oh, devil's lettuce. Devil's lettuce. The devil's lettuce. That's uh, uh, infernal imagery uh, uh, drop in there. Yeah. Devil's so lettuce. You see what I did while I was a professional. But I can sense that tomorrow it might be a classic. Tomorrow might be a classic. Yeah, I'm just getting that feeling. Okay. The fourth, you know, classic, I'm thinking. Thanks a lot, Andy, for coming over for a third day. No problem. All right. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. 31 Days of Horror is officially sponsored by Infernal Imagery. Visit infernalimagery.com throughout October 2018 and receive 20% off your purchases by using the offer code 31DAYS. Today's tea of the day is Infernal Imagery Planchette. That's off a code 31 days for 20% off at infernalimagery.com.